Our story begins with an android named Jimmy, who takes us on a journey through the history of the mother world. The royal family's relentless pursuit of power comes to an abrupt halt when an assassin eliminates the king and queen. Belisarius, a tyrant who commands the forces of the mother world, dispatches his ruthless deputy, Admiral Atticus Noble, to suppress potential rebellions in the remote corners of the mother world. On the planet Velt, Cora diligently tending to her crops before she joins her friend Gunnar for a harvest festival in their village. The village chief, Sindri, addresses his people, while a hunter named Den harbors romantic feelings for Cora, who is not interested in pursuing a romantic relationship. While spending time with her friend, Sam Cora observes Motherworld ships descending on Veldi. The villagers gather to discuss their strategy towards the visitors before Noble arrives with three smaller ships. Noble interrogates Sindri about potential rebels and the village's crop yield, as Gunnar had sold surplus crops to the enemies of the Motherworld. Following a heated exchange, Noble kills Sindri and another woman in front of the villagers and demands that they surrender their grain supply within ten weeks. In the village, a young soldier named Aris develops feelings for Sam but is forced to watch as his superiors torment her. He also has a brief conversation with Jimmy, who tells Sam about Princess Issa, the deceased king and queen's daughter. Jimmy expresses regret over the lost opportunity for a kinder error that Issa could have ushered in. The villagers engage in a heated debate on how to deal with Noble and his men, with some suggesting appealing to their humanity. Cora witnesses some soldiers harassing and attempting to assault Sam, despite Eris's intervention. Cora intervenes, killing the soldiers with an axe until the captain threatens Sam. Jimmy enters and, defying the captain's order to kill Cora, shoots him instead. This convinces Cora that they must resist as Noble will exterminate the villagers upon his return. Cora and Gunnar leave Velt to find a rebel group called the Blood Axes who might help them against Belisarius. Cora shares her past with Gunnar, revealing that she had a chance to kill Belisarius during a massacre in her childhood but was out of ammunition. Instead of killing her, Belisarius trained her at the Imperium under the name Arthalais, turning her into a killer before she deserted. Despite being trained to be an emotionless mercenary, Cora had a lover who died in battle. Cora and Gunnar reach the port city of Providence to find a man who can lead them to the Blood Axes. When they mention General Titus, a man named Kai takes notice. A thug attempts to assault Gunnar but is knocked down by Cora. An alien informs Cora and Gunnar about Titus's location before the thug returns with reinforcements. Cora and Gunnar fight and kill them until the lead thug threatens Cora. Kai intervenes, shooting the thug in the head and introducing himself as a smuggler before joining Cora and Gunnar. Kai suggests to Cora that he knows a man who can aid them on their mission. He guides them to a ranch on another planet to find a man called Tarak, who is being kept prisoner by the rancher, Hickman, due to a debt Tarak owes him. He is told about Cora's mission, and the three bargain with Hickman that if Tarak can tame a nearby chained up creature called a Bennu, then Tarak can go free, otherwise all of them will be indebted to Hickman. Tarak approaches the Bennu and communicates with it. After freeing it, Tarak rides the wild beast. He is granted freedom to join Cora, but as he leaves, he witnesses Hickman poorly handling the Bennu which ends with the creature killing Hickman by sticking its talon through his chest. Kai then leads Cora to a cobalt mining planet, where they meet a swordsman called Nemesis. Kai informs her of the job just before she meets a humanoid spider creature called Harada, who is keeping a small girl captive before preparing to kill her. Nemesis tries to negotiate with Harada, but ultimately ends up battling the monster and impales her fatally before saving the girl. Nemesis joins the rest of the crew. The experience makes Cora reminisce over how she spent time as the royal guard for Issa when she served the Imperium. She witnessed Issa bring a bird back to life, and the king believed Cora being her friend made her feel safe. But Cora feels guilt over what happened to Issa and her parents. The crew goes to a moon that holds a gladiator arena where Titus is. Once an Imperium general, he now lives disgraced on the streets and works as a prize fighter after his previous failure in battle. While Titus remains ashamed of his past, Cora convinces him to fight back so he can get his revenge. The crew then goes to the planet Sharan, where they meet King Levitica, so that they can meet the Blood Axe siblings, Darian and Divre, in the hopes that Gunnar's previous connections with them may give them a chance at convincing them to join their rebellion. The two have no desire to help until Cora gives them a speech. Darian then gives his speech to his clan, with half of them joining him and the other half going with Devra, Noble and his crew. The king's gaze, 
have been tracking the blood axes and later turn up on the scene after the insurgents retreat, and he kills Levitica before laying siege to the area. Kai guides the crew to a trading post under the guise that he is dropping off goods before setting off for a better life. But he was actually in cahoots with Noble this whole time, and was trying to collect the bounties on the heads of Koro and the others. Noble has them captured and reveals he knows more about the crew than they let on. Tarak is a prince, while Nemesis killed several Imperium soldiers to avenge her murdered children. When Gunner is ordered to execute Korra, he instead grabs the weapon and uses it to kill Kai. A battle breaks out between the freed rebels and the king's gaze. Darian gives his life to bring down a ship and save as many of his people as he can. Most of the villains are killed before Korra and Noble have their showdown atop the post's highest platform. After an intense fight, Korra overpowers Noble and knocks him off the ledge. The crew returns to Velt 80 and enjoys their temporary victory, but they are aware that the Imperium will soon retaliate. Korra brings her new friends back to her village, more hopeful for their future than before. An Imperium ship recovers Noble's body and starts to revive him. His mind is taken to a realm where he communicates with Belisarius. Despite thinking he will be happy to know about Noble finding Korra, Belisarius is instead angered and demands that Noble bring Korra to him so that he may kill her personally. The story will continue as Noble revives and attempts to accomplish his mission, while Korra and her fellow freedom fighters endeavor to rally the colonists to stand against the Imperium. Subscribe so you don't miss part 2 of this story and other movie recaps. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let me know what you think of this recap in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button to support our channel. Until next time, this is Joseph from Joseph Zek Recap. Stay safe.